Hi, welcome to 10 Minute Violin. We're so we're so glad to have you join us here today. I'm Miguel Ramirez, and this is the live stream training session for the 10 minute practice video titled Violin Bow Control. I want to make sure everyone has a good understanding of our format here at 10 Minute Violin. Uh, first of all, I want to clarify that this session here is not the 10 minute practice video itself. It's the training session where we'll explain in detail how to pr best approach the material presented in our violin bow control 10 minute practice video. It's important to watch this training session at least once before following along with the 10 minute practice video so you can optimize your time spent with it. There will also be a question and answer time at the end of this training session for those of you who are tuning in live and the separate 10 minute practice video will be available on our YouTube channel directly following this session. An easy way to think about it is if you view this live stream training session as your lecture or class and the separate 10 minute practice video as your lab or your homework. At this time I'd like to introduce my brother and co-host of 10 Minute Violin, John Ramirez. Hello everyone. Um, Sorry about the, the little problems here and there, but uh, we were having some problems with uh, YouTube uh, not be able to hook up our stream correctly. But I think we'll be able to fix that by next week. Um, I just want to remind you that, um, that I'll be putting our practice link for this session into the chat after, after we uh, finish our, our uh, training session. And uh, also, uh, if when you get a chance, uh, go ahead and uh, say hello to us on the chat and we'll get to you as soon as Miguel finish uh, talking about what's coming up. All right. All right. So um, you know, today what we're going to be uh, covering is uh, we're going to build upon the things that we have done last time and we're going to try to implement them more with the instrument and the bow itself so that way uh, you can start to develop more bow control which will in turn help you to, uh, to get all the dynamics and the articulations that you need, um, the, the control, the, the combining the strength and the dexterity of the right hand um, is really gonna get you there. So um, finally, we hope this information will be, va will be valuable for you no matter what level you are at the violin and also be helpful for those of you who are viola students. Uh, now I'd like to take a moment to say hi to those in the chat room. Let's just check in with John to see who's joining us today. Uh, we have a couple of people. Actually, we have four, I think three people right now on. Uh, so I'm just going to pass it to, to Miguel and he'll say hello to you guys. All right. So we got Calvin in Livingston, New Jersey. Hi, Calvin. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Julian. And so we have a few people on here, but they haven't said hi yet. So maybe we'll talk to them okay. at the end of our session. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. And uh, thanks for those of you who said hi through the chat. Um, so you can submit your questions in the chat at any time during the training session. We'll get to as many as we can after we finish covering all the material today. Since there's about 15 seconds of delay between broadcasting live in our studio and when you receive it at home, try to submit your questions before the end of the three-point bow draw with tube and bow section of the training to make sure we see them. So last few things before we dive into the material. Follow the links below if you'd like to book a private lesson with me or John. And if you find our content helpful, I'd like you to remind you to subscribe, hit the bell to be notified every time we release a new video, like and share it with your friends. Okay, so the first exercise you'll see in today's ten, in this week's 10 minute practice video uh, is bow liftoffs using the pinky push up and crab crawl. So here we're combining a couple of previous exercises in order to lift the bow off the string. So we're going to start with a good bow hold at the balance point. Okay. And if you remember, we had put the, I had marked the balance point with the yellow tape here. We went over that previously. 
So uh, we'll start with a good bow hold at the balance point. Make sure also my bow is tight enough here. Um, and then we're going to place our bow. We're going to get the violin. Place the bow on the A string. In the middle of the bow, uh, with the middle of the bow resting on the string. Okay. So the middle of the bow is uh, marked with white tape right there. So uh, now we're going to do a pinky push-up, and the bow should lift off the string and then come right back down. So pinky push-up, bow lifts off the string, and then comes right back down. So we're going to keep the bow resting on the string at the middle of the bow. Now we're going to try to keep the bow as still as possible to make as little sound as possible and do a crab crawl toward the frog about an inch or two. And then we're going to do the same thing. We'll do that pinky push up here. And the bow will, might feel a little bit heavier here and, and probably not too much at this point. Okay, so pinky push up to lift the bow off the string. Now let's do another crab crawl, keeping that bow at the middle point and as silent as possible. Double check that your bow holds still good. Thumb is directly across from the middle finger. And we'll do another pinky push up to lift the bow off the string. Again, we're going to do another crab crawl, try to keep the bow still and in the middle of the string, closer to the frog. Now I'm getting close to the winding here. And we're going to do a pinky push up here. Now the bow should start to feel a little bit heavier because you have more of the bow to actually lift off the string. Those pinky push ups. Uh, we remember that this is not supinating with the forearm. This is only done with the pinky on its own. So I'm going to crab crawl a little bit more. Should be easy to keep that bow silent, much easier here. All right, we're going to do that again. Same pinky push up. And as we do the pinky push up again, the bow lifts off the string. So bow lift offs using the crab crawl and pinky push up. I'm going to crawl all the way back now to the frog. And wow, this is a big difference here. So I can feel like that pinky has to work a lot harder to get the bow off the string here. Okay, that's it. That's, um, that's, that's it for the first exercise. Um, the next exercise is pronation with leverage using bow on violin. So this exercise is a continuation of the previous pronation with leverage exercise. Uh, the difference is that we'll be placing the bow on the string. So before we had done with the pencil, if you remember, we did the pronation with the pencil on, on the left hand, and then we did it with the bow on the arm. So now we're going to do it with the bow on the string. Um, and we're going to start with a good bow hold here at the frog. So take your time to double check all of that, all those placements. Uh, and then we're going to place the bow on the E string at the middle of the bow. Um, remember here that to double check the arm level. The uh, forearm is horizontal like it always should be at the middle of the bow. Uh, and that is in line with the hand. From here, we'll start our pronations, making sure that the stick of the bow is being pushed all the way down to the hair where it contacts the string. So the stick is being pushed all the way to the hair with these pronations. Maybe I'll do it. I'll turn this way. So you can see the stick of the bow is going all the way down to the hair in the string. So it like, doesn't really look like I'm doing that much. But remember, it's, that, it's this exercise that we did before with the pronations.
Okay. Um, so then also you can lift the pinky and ring fingers and put them back down again if you need to, if you, if you need to refresh that feeling um, of the pronation here, and then we can put them back down and continue that same feeling. So do that anytime you need to. I'm gonna try to get a front view of that one also. Mm -hmm. so like, uh, yeah. like this here? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so we're gonna lift off pinky and the ring finger because this is really where your pronation is uh, is going. The, the pinky and the ring finger aren't doing much. And then when you put the pinky and ring finger back, you, you simply, you just rest them back and you continue doing that same exact motion and their pinky and ring finger are continuing not to really do anything. Okay. Uh, good, and so then uh, and we're going to do the same thing on the A string. So again, making sure that the forearm and the hand are horizontal. Same process here. And then the D string, same process. G string, again, double check that the forearm is horizontal with the hand. And it's the same process. All right. Um, so that's that exercise. The next exercise uh, you'll see is bow arm levels with the bow and violin. So this exercise is a review of the bow arm levels for each string at all three points of the bow. This time we won't be using the tube. We'll, be, we'll allow now the bow hair to rest on the strings. Okay. So as always, double check your bow hold before we begin. We'll start on the E string with the easiest placement, the middle of the bow. Remember that on all strings, we make sure that the forearm is in line with the hand and is horizontal like we just talked about. Uh, we're gonna roll the bow to the A string. Again, leading with the elbow like we have previously discussed. It's always good to review these concepts it's the only way that they are going to be implemented in your playing is if you review them often. So we're just going through all of those levels, leading with the elbow and keeping everything horizontal. Make sure as you roll the bow across the strings, there's no tube or you know the dowel or anything, so it's easy to make sound if you're not careful. So notice that I'm keeping everything silent as I roll the bow across the strings silent as possible. Okay, so next we're going to review the levels at the frog. Okay, so starting at the E string, again the, the forearm is horizontal, right? Um, as we move to the other strings, again here forearm horizontal in line with the hand, uh, it starts to progressively slant down towards the hand, right? So on the A string it starts to slant down on the D string, it slants down more, and on the G string, it slants down the most. Okay, and then in the video, the practice video, I'm just going to call out the string, like E string, G string, E string, and you're going to go to each one of those D string, A, G, okay. Um, so, uh, you know, making sure, double check, uh, the forearm always is staying in line with the hand here. So both the middle and the frog, they stay in line with each other. Uh, next, we'll review the arm levels at the tip. On the E string, the forearm is slanting down at the steepest angle of the four strings. And here's a little hint, when you start at the tip on the E string, since we're just rolling the bow over, if you start at the very tip, you're not gonna be able to actually roll it over to the G string. So you're gonna have to go maybe a little bit, uh, a couple inches from the tip there. So that way it has time, uh, plenty of uh, room to roll across the string. So here uh, at the E string, uh, slanting down at the steepest angle, remember to keep, to uh, you know, if you're gonna keep the bow straight, the forearm at the tip is not in line with the hand, um, but the hand adjusts to have a slight angle with the forearm. So here's, a, they're not in line anymore. 
Um, if you find yourself doing too extreme of an angle with your with your hand, um, like if you're really like doing this kind of a thing, um, that's that's like gonna be too much if if your angle is like like that. Um, so you need if that's happening, you need to double check that your bow hold fingers are properly slanted and your thumb is properly slanted towards the frog. If they're like that. Um, then you shouldn't have to have too extreme of a of a, an angle there with the hand. It should be able to. We're going from this to to like this. You should be able to have them all slanted like this, and it's a slight angle. Uh, if you're having any struggle with this, it's okay. Uh, it just simply means you need to get more practice with your bow hold. So if that's the case, just go back to the previous bow hold practice videos and do them as much as you need to to just get more comfortable before moving on with this. Um, so uh, let's just continue this all the way. Now that we have a good bow hold here, we're going to continue it to the A string, slanting down still but not as much, the D string. We talked about the D string being almost horizontal, maybe slightly slanting down, but we, you know, we can kind of think of it as somewhat hor horizontal. Uh, the G string is the only time where your forearm actually slants up slightly, right, towards the hand. And maybe it's good to see it from this angle. Here's the D string, pretty much horizontal, right? A string slanting down, E string slanting down, A string slanting down, and then D string mostly horizontal, and G string slanting up towards the hand. I know we've gone over this. This is a review exercise in the practice video. I'm simply just going to call out the string name and you try to go as quickly as you can with the correct level for that point in the bow. Um, okay. So the next exercise we'll cover is the three-point index and ring finger seesaw. So on the practice video, this will be broken up by string and alternated with the other exercises. So I have an E string and then another exercise and then the A string and, and so forth. Uh, for the purposes of this training session, though, I'm going to go through all of the strings at once. So we'll start on the E string resting at the middle of the bow. Okay, double check your <clears throat> bow grip, your bow hold, as we like to call it. Uh, double check your, your arm level and everything. Okay, uh, use your ring finger to slide the bow towards the fingerboard. Kind of like how we did in that last exercise, but now on the violin. Use your index finger to pull it back towards the bridge. So we're sliding across the string towards the fingerboard with the ring finger, and then the index finger, we're bringing that back. So we'll do that a few times on the E string, that seesaw with the index and ring fingers. Okay, so now the index and ring fingers are good at steering the bow across the sounding points, right? But notice that they're also leaving us with a crooked bow, right? at both points. So to correct this, we'll need to start following the bow with the rest of the arm led by the elbow. So notice that I went to the fingerboard and then I followed it and now I have a straight bow again. I'm going to pull it in, I'm going to do that seesaw back in towards the bridge and then I'm going to follow it with the elbow and now I have a straight bow again. Sure. So ring finger pulls it towards the fingerboard, and then I follow it with the elbow and the rest of the forearm, and then I pull it back in with the index finger, and then I follow that to where I can have a straight bow again. Um, as we start to do these motions more simultaneously, we'll now make a st we'll maintain a straight bow across the sounding points. So the, the goal is to do those two motions kind of more at the same time. So the, the, the index and ring fingers are doing the steering, but then everything else follows. Uh, 
Um, let's try the same thing at the tip. So again, we're here on the E string and check the position of the forearm and hand. Check your bow hold, everything you want to double check. Start your seesaw with the index and ring fingers again. And then follow through with the elbow to keep the bow straight. Notice I'm making little sounds, but we want to try to avoid as much uh, actual sound of the string as much as possible. We should mostly just be hearing that scraping sound across the sounding point. All right, now, next we'll repeat the exercise at the frog. Now for this particular exercise, you'll need to be about an inch or so away from the frog to have an effective seesaw motion. If I'm right there by the frog, it doesn't really give me much motion. But um, so an inch or two away from the frog, uh, we'll do the same thing. Start the seesaw back and forth, index finger, ring finger, pull back with the index finger, and then again, start following it with the elbow and the rest of the forearm. And notice when I get really good at it, my bow pretty much looks like it's just staying hor uh, uh, staying parallel with the, the bridge, you know, in the, in the, in the fingerboard. Um, but I'm still continuing that same motion. Okay, so then let's just go through the same process with the rest of the strings. And always checking again that the bow arm level is correct for each string at all three points. So we'll quickly review the A string. Start the seesaw. And again, my forearm's horizontal in the middle. And then I adjust it. Okay, tip, same thing. Forearm slanting down at the tip and checking that. Double checking my bow hold and then following it with the rest of the arm. Okay, frog slanting down a little bit towards the hand. Start the seesaw and then quickly follow it again. Uh, D string starting in the middle. Start the seesaw. Follow it. Notice again my forearm is horizontal. Uh, we'll do the tip actually. Tip. Start the seesaw. Is my arm level right? I don't think so. I need to adjust that. Mostly horizontal here. Okay. And then I follow it. Okay, frog. Check the arm level. Good, slanting down. Start the seesaw. Start to follow it. G string at the middle. Check my arm level. Start to follow the seesaw. Tip. Slanting up. Start the seesaw. Follow through. Frog. Slanting down. Same process. Start the seesaw then follow through. Okay, so that's a lot. And that's one of the reasons why we broke it up uh, to different strings when you actually are doing the practice video. You don't have to do all that at once. Um, we, we break it up. Okay. So the next exercise for today is three point bow liftoffs, alternating pinky push-up, and 
supination. So remember those two things that we did, two different motions that tend to kind of do the same thing with the pencil or whatever we're using. Um, so like the last exercise in the practice video, this one is also broken up by string and alternated with the other exercises. Again, right now for the training session, we'll go through all the strings at one time. So we'll start with the good bow hold with the bow resting on the E string at the middle, just like before. And you know, you know the movements already for this one. We'll start with a pinky push up. And what that does is lifts the bow off the string. And I guess maybe it'd be good to go this way here for that. So pinky push up, bow lifts off the string and back down again. All right, so that's the one motion. Next, we'll keep the pinky still. So we're just gonna keep our bow grip, or, or I keep saying bow grip, we're trying to say bow hold because we don't want it to sound like you're gripping something. Um, <laughs> I know that's like traditionally the, the term that people use is bow grip, but we try to stay away from that because we, won't, we don't want you to like grip. Um, bow hold. So our bow hold uh, is, is gonna stay the same and we're gonna do that same supination and pronation. With the pronation, you don't have to put pressure. You just simply just put it back like that. So, um, so yeah, this is just combining those two exercising t exercises and alternating them. So pinky push up first, and then supination, pinky push up, and then supination. So you may have to look really closely at the video to see the difference between these two ways of lifting the bow off the string, but there is a very big difference between them. And take extra care that you're not confusing the two motions. Um, to review the differences, just one more time, during the pinky push-up, only the pinky is counteracting the weight of the tip to lift it up. And the forearm remains still in the prone position. During the supination, the pinky remains still and in your regular bow hold position and the forearm supinates, which again is the radius bone, which ends on the thumb side of the hand, uncrossing itself or rotating itself around the ulna bone, which sits on the pinky side of the hand. Again, two completely different ways to get the bow to do exactly the same thing, which is to lift off the string. Uh, the reason why we're doing both of them and alternating them uh, is so you get used to them because we both we use both of these in violin, violin playing. We use both of these motions. So now we'll continue to the tip. Check your forearm position and your bow hold. Repeat the exercise. Pinky push up, supination, pinky push up, supination pinky push up. Okay, and that frog here. Check the arm level. Pinky push up. Supination. Pinky push up. Supination. Pinky push up. Supination. Okay. Um, same thing on the next strings. A string. Check the arm level first. Pinky push up. Supination. Pinky push up, the uh, tip. <laughs> pinky push up, supination. Pinky push up, and slanting a little bit down here. Right. Um, frog, slanting down again. Pinky push up, supination. Again, you're gonna have to go a little bit away from the frog like the last exercise. Supination, pinky push up, supination. Again, at the frog, you're, you're not going to get too much range with the pinky push-up because it's so close to the hand. Um, D string, check the arm level, same exercise. The tip, mostly horizontal again, same exercise. Frog slanting down. G string, check the forearm level, horizontal, same exercise. Tip, 
slanting up. Same exercise. Frog slanting down. Same exercise. Okay, and that's it. Again, it's broken up because it's kind of a lot to do at one time. The next exercise we're gonna cover today is 25 pinky push-ups. And so this one doesn't need too much explanation. It's literally 25 pinky push-ups in a row using the bow. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I'll say is that if it's too hard to complete a set of 25 of these, and we're just, you know, we're just doing these push-ups. One, two, three, four, five. We get two, 25 of those in a row. Um, if it's too hard to complete a set of 25 of these with your hand at the frog, move it in a place that's closer to the balance point, towards the balance point, uh, where your pinky still will need to work hard. You want to give your pinky a workout, no matter what, where you are on the bow. Um, but... You, where you can still keep your good form while getting through all 25 of the push-ups. So I'd rather have you do that than to be struggling and not really doing the exercise properly here at the frog. Um, then eat, if, if that's you, each day just challenge yourself to get closer, to move closer and closer to the frog until you're all the way back at the frog, able to do 25 of these. Um, uh, what the moment, you know, as you're moving closer towards the frog, the moment that your form gets compromised and your pinky collapses or whatever it may be, or just can't, you know, just can't do it, uh, then again, move it a little bit back towards the balance point to complete the rest of the 25, uh, the 25 reps there, and then try moving it again closer to the frog the following day. Okay? So that's pretty much it. So it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's definitely a workout for your pinky. Uh, stick with it though, no matter, you know, you can always get to the 25, that's for sure. You just have to make sure that you're in a good place in the bow. Um, all right, next we'll move on to string changes with the pinky. Now this is another motion in addition to arm levels that we use to change the strings uh, at the frog, okay? And so for this, we'll do something a little different. We're gonna place the bow at the frog where the hair is contacting both the E and the A strings. And uh, for this, the forearm level should be somewhere between the level of each of those strings. So it will not be horizontal as if we were only on the E string here, um, but it'll be ever so slightly slanted down toward the hand. And so now it's contacting both the E and the A strings. From here, we'll do pinky push-ups, this time not to lift the bow off the, the both strings altogether, but to lift off one string at a time, leaving the bow always contacting one string or another. So in other words, we're toggling the bow back and forth between the E, e and A strings using the pinky. So this pinky push-up should be a little easier than when you're doing a bow lift off with the pinky. And uh, also notice that my other fingers have the flexibility to move along with the pinky. So I'm on the A string, E string, A string, E string, and my forearm is still staying in that position that is between the two strings. So that's not moving at all. It's simply the pinky push up. Okay, next we'll get the arm level for the A and D strings. And uh, this one is like a little bit, you know, again, not quite to the D string level, not quite to the A string level, but in between the two. And we'll do the same thing, pinky push-ups to be on the A string when it's like more extended and the D string when it's more contracted. A string, D string, A string, D string. And you're gonna have to look carefully at your bow hair on the strings to see if they're really contacting the strings they're supposed to be with this exercise. Double check again your, your hand, right? Is my thumb slanted? Is it, is it hooked, right? Is, is my index finger 
wrapped around the bow where it's supposed to be, all those things that we've gone over in the previous weeks. Um, you should pretty much be comfortable with them at this point, but you always want to double check. Okay, next we're going to go to the G and D strings. Again, slanting down, but not quite as much as you would for the just the G string alone. And again, toggle D string is now extended and G string is more contracted with the pinky and then back and forth. D string, G string, D string, G string, D string, G string. So this is another way that we change strings um, at the frog that doesn't include the, the, the arm level changes. Okay, so it's time for the last exercise um, that we're gonna cover this week. And this is a three point bow draw with the tube and the bow. It's the last exercise you'll see. Uh, actually, it's not the last exercise in the practice video. Again, because of those ones that are kind of alternated, but it's, it's the last unique exercise for today. Uh, for this, we'll need to attach our tube uh, back to the violin. So we have the <coughs> tube and And the rubber band. So by now you might be more used to more used to to, to attaching this. Making it a little more even here in the back. And then I want to make sure again that it's not crooked, but it's straight and parallel with, with the bridge, right? So I think that's in a pretty good spot. Um, just to remind you too, you generally want it like resting on both the, the D and the A strings. So that way it's an even distance from the E string and the G string. All right. Okay, and it's like the exercise we did with the dowel, but now you're going to do the motions with the bow using your great bow hold that you've been practicing the last few weeks. And, uh, and we're, we're gonna start to feel more like playing on the instrument itself. So we're gonna go through each string. We're gonna start at the E string. And uh, you know we'll start here in the middle, E string. We're gonna bring it to the frog, which is horizontal, back down to horizontal to the middle, and then slanting down with a slight bend in the wrist at the tip. And we'll just go through those three points. One point, two points, three points. Okay, so those are the arm levels for this E string. And we'll just go through all the strings. A string here. All right, slanting down at the frog. Horizontal in the middle. Slanting down slightly at the, at the tip. And then back horizontal and slanting down. One, two, three points. Three, two, one. D string. Uh, slanting down a little more at the frog, always horizontal to the middle, pretty much horizontal at the tip. When you do this, look at that bow. It's, it's like it's on one level playing field. And notice I'm not doing this and all that. I'm just going through the three points. All right, G string, the most slanted, down towards the hand at the frog, and horizontal in the middle, and then slanting up at the tip. One, two, three points. All right, and that's it for today's training session. This is all you need to know to do 
the 10 minute practice video. Remember, like we had talked about last time, uh, to get the results you want, you actually have to press play every day and, uh, and, and go through with the 10 minute video and give it your best effort um, every day, every day. So uh, let's go back to John and see if there's any questions for today. Oops. Hmm. Kind of sprung that on you there. <laughs> yeah, hold on. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. There I go. <laughs> There's too many buttons to push. That's the problem. Um, all right, so let me just check to make sure I'm actually working here. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Um, Uh, yeah, okay. So um, we just, let's see here. It uh, doesn't look like we have, we have people on watching, but no, not very many people are saying hello. Uh, so we only have one other person. A lot of shy people. Yeah. Today. <laughs> Don't be shy. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so we have, uh, let's see, it looks like Christine is on. So Hi, Christine. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the other thing is that I'm going to, right now, I'm going to drop in... Uh, on the chat the practicing link uh, so that way you can actually get started as soon as possible uh, and like Miguel said just remember that uh, you're gonna get the most out of uh, the videos that we're doing if you um, follow through with the with the practicing part of it um, you'll find that the 10 minutes that you actually invest in in, in practicing on a daily basis on these smaller um, uh, components in your in your playing will maximize what you're doing in your overall playing. So uh, try your best to, to um, uh, use the videos, uh, practice with the videos, and um, and I think you'll see a big difference in your in your in your playing. All right. So I'm gonna switch you over back to Miguel. All right. Thanks, John, for that. That's a good word of encouragement there for everybody. Um, you know, we want you to we want you to succeed, and so. Uh, uh, we'll wrap it up for today. Uh, again, follow the links below uh, but if you'd like to book a private lesson with me or John. And again, if you find our content helpful to you, I'd like to remind you to subscribe, hit the bell to be notified every time we release a new video, hit that bell, <laughs> and uh, like and share it with your friends. Um, Join us next time as we continue the series on bowing. And don't forget to follow up again daily with the violin bow control 10-minute practice video and press play every day. Uh, good.